Hi, and welcome back to the Expired Podcast by Macy Bookout and Natalie Gard. This week's episode is on 14-year-old Chattanooga, Chelsea Hayes. That means we're officially official. Are we ready? We're ready. Let's get ready to rumble. I'm not kidding. That song should be playing. Yeah. One, two, go. Yay! Here we are. Here we are. This is the Expired Podcast, and we've had a heck of a day. You've had a good day, though. I've had a great day. I put makeup on. <laughs> I'm, I love TTM, but I'm not wearing TTM. I have jeans on, not jeans. sweatpants. That never happens for me. Ever. Me either. Your hair is down. It's down. I'm not going to mess with it. You're not. Because <laughs> we get that comment. <laughs> yeah. I get that comment all the time, and I'm like... You do. That's, yeah. <laughs> Worry about <Okay>. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Let me deal with my anxiety, mm-hmm. how I want to deal with it. Exactly. Um, but no, really, I feel like we have actually been here for like three hours. Yeah. And we, we weren't that. even prepping for the case. No, we were just... We were over-prepared. Yeah. And we showed up and spent three hours I just... Maybe we're just that good of friends. Like, Maybe. we just want to hang out. This is our escape. This is definitely our escape. That's why we do it for $0, zero. Dollars on a $0 dollar budget. <laughs> but we love it. We do. And um, we're going to talk about this case, and it's pretty crazy. Um, we're going to go over the background of the... What is it called? It's not... Well, the background of the vic- Victim. victim background of the victim we're going to go into the day of the events of what happened we're going to go into the night of the murder and then we're going to go into like the evidence the, the, the stories right. interrogation and then we're really going to praise um the lieutenant involved in this yeah case the police on- work in this case was and it's a chattanooga case it is i would i'm I'm proud. Like, mm-hmm. the yeah. police work in this case, and even publicly, mm-hmm. was, really to me, was outstanding. Yeah. It was and good. I'm glad to report that he is still on the Chattanooga Police Department yeah, force a lieutenant. to this day. Yay! He's so good. I love yes, him. Yes, he is fantastic. So, this is the case of Chelsea Hayes, and she made news because she was found unalived on the on a front porch in Chattanooga literally a front porch a front porch like sitting on a front porch so imagine like the couch that we sit on this like shitty little <laughs> futon from Big Lots probably yeah. it's great we think that we think we have friends yeah. in the couch but <laughs> <laughs> either way um but wicker like wicker furniture mhm it's a little wicker, like, love seat. Yeah. On a porch. And a 14-year-old girl is just propped up sitting in the couch. And gone. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of really, um, there's a lot of really, I feel like everything about this case is very adult. Yes. And even her life. She was an adult, and mm-hmm. we'll get into that later. Mm-hmm. So if, don't get annoyed if we remind you all, like, she's a 14-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. This is a child. Yeah. My, Bentley is mm-hmm. 14 years old. Mm-mm. He oh. is a kid. Yeah. He's a child. So. <sighs> so her name is Chelsea <laughs> Hayes. She was born on August 5th, 1997. Leo for the win. Yay! Um, she went to Lakeside Elementary, which is very common around, you know, mm-hmm. we know that school. She went to Brown Middle, and she was, at the time of her death, a freshman at Central, Central High, High school. school. Right down the road. Mm-hmm. That's what makes this case so crazy. She was 14 at the time of her death, and she ha- she actually had a 15-month-old baby, baby boy. Yes, she was a mother. Mm-hmm. Um, but a good mother, from all accounts. Yes. Um, and 
she lived at the time she lived with her mom and her stepdad I believe her stepdad and grandmother mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I do want to touch on is the fact that she was had the support with her family mm -hmm. to have her child be a part of raising her child be a good mom be a good mom, show up, but had the support to continue to go to high school. Yeah. That's a game changer. Well, you would know. I would know. That is like life changing, not just for the mom, the but baby. it's life changing for the child. Mm -hmm. That is good freaking job, mom and grandmother, because there are so many kids that... And I was one of the lucky ones. There are so many kids that are sexually active that end up getting pregnant that do not, they do want to have their baby and raise their baby. And they can't because they don't have that support. The circumstances aren't The right. circumstances don't work out and it's not best, you know. Mm -hmm. There are other options that are great. But good job family mm -hmm. for showing up so that she could continue to go to school. Mm -hmm. and be a teenager, but also be a good mom. Yep. Great job. Yes. High exactly. five. <laughs> yes. Um, I read this in a report. She was baptized on, in October of 2006. So she was a part of the McDowell Memorial Church of God. So she was involved yeah. in church and mm -hmm. school and being a mom and also being a teenager. Like, that's... Yeah. Difficult to juggle. 2012. So this was 2006. So she would have been eight? Yeah. Wow. That's younger than I was when I got baptized. Same. I wasn't was like baptized until I was like 13 or 20 something. Really? Okay. I think I think I was I was 21. Bentley, me, Bentley, my brother, my mom, and my dad all got baptized together. Aww. Yeah, and my grandfather was a preacher my whole life. <laughs> well, you know. But that's the thing about their church that mm -hmm. I love so much was it wasn't forceful. Yeah, you didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And you could show up and go to church and worship or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, no, yeah, we all did this together. I was 20-something. That's so cool. And Bentley was like three or four, I think. Yeah. That's cool. It was cool. I like that. Yeah. So, Chelsea Hayes is 14, and she has a child. She's going to school. School. She's a freshman in high school, and as of May thirteenth, May twelfth, thirteenth, yeah, 13th, it's kind of it happened at night. Rough, yeah, yeah. Um, of twenty twelve, she was found on the front porch of some house, like a random house to her family. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't the baby's father's house. It wasn't a friend's a friend. house. It wasn't to her and really to her too and to her family. They were strangers. Yeah. Um, so it all kind of started on Saturday, May 12th. And her mom had called into the police department and reported her as a runaway. Basically, when a teenager leaves the house and is like doesn't tell their parents where they're going or family or whoever they're living with where they're going and won't answer their phone or yeah. whatever the case um again this is 2012 it's not like how today is where like everybody had an iphone yeah um especially i mean i'm assuming she would because in today's world a 14 any 14 year old has a phone mm -hmm. but anyways her mom calls and reports her as a runaway, but per the detectives or the police that got the call, the mom, her mom was not super concerned. Not like this is a missing person and something terrible has happened. More so like, all right, she went to sleep. I woke up. She's gone. I don't know where she could be. Mm -hmm. Um... And her son was still at the house. Right. So, from what the detectives say and what the police say from that call, they weren't 
it wasn't like super urgent. It was more or less like, here's the starting point. Yeah. So if this becomes an emergency or urgent, we know this is when the first call happened. Mm -hmm. Then they go basically a few hours and she calls her mom. Chelsea calls her mom and says, I'm going to be home later this evening. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm coming home later tonight. ABC. Mm -hmm. So the mom calls the police department back and tells them this. Like, okay, I've talked to Chelsea. I've spoken with her. She said she's coming home tonight. It's all good. Well, the night comes and Chelsea doesn't show up. So then the mom calls back Mm -hmm. and Tell, updates them again. Right. Like, yeah, she did not show up. She's not here. And now it's been hours. Now mm-hmm. it's been enough of amount of time. And I feel like it's probably even more urgent from a mother's perspective. If your kid calls you and says they're going to be home at a certain time, expect them at a certain time. And they don't show and up. They don't show up then we're treading level. muddy waters. Yeah. Like, now it's, now it's weird. Yeah. So... Basically, I think on the 12th, like Saturday evening, that's what the state of this case was. Like, mm, she, she was missing or a runaway. She said she'd be home. Hours passed. She didn't show up. No one can get a hold of her. Where is this 14-year-old girl? Right. Where is she? So, then Sunday comes. Yeah. So, it's it all kind of started as a missing child. Mm-hmm. And... On Sunday, a call comes in to the police, and it is from the sister of the homeowner, the aunt of the defendant in this case. Yeah. And is like, oh my gosh, there is a young teenager on Our porch. my sister's front yeah. porch, and I don't know what's going on, and obviously... No one in the house knows what's going on. Yeah. We think she's dead. Yeah. But at, at first, the first call was, well, the the report or the, the alert from fellow officers. Like, the first thing put out was a distress call. That basically means, like, hey, let's alert officers in the area, EMTs, firefighters like someone needs assistance somebody struggling mm-hmm. to survive right now mm-hmm. get over here it's an emergency then it the police show up on scene first and they immediately call back out and yeah. alert law enforcement in the area EMTs everyone that this isn't a distress call this is a deceased call mm-hmm. so when they got to the scene they determined and realized that she was, in fact... DOA. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when the detectives get called. Right. And this is, like, the guy that deserves a trophy. Yeah. His name is Daniel (laughs) Francis. We've actually been in contact with him. He's such a great guy. He's a a dad of six. Um, Six. Six. (laughs) His wife is, I think, a teacher. I think. I, don't quote me on that, but he they got six seems, kids. She could be a homeschool teacher at this sh- point. That family just seems like on point. He's legit. I want to be friends with him. He is legit, mm-hmm. though. I mean, I feel like he should be in the textbooks for detective work. Exactly. Like he is. I I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, he went. He did all the things. All the things. So. Let's get into, we've talked about the day of the report, Mm -hmm. right? The aunt calls, everything that happened. So, I think we should get into, like, what happened. Once they get on scene? Yeah. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. All, we have had all the emergency calls (laughs) today. It's been nuts. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. So, on Sunday when... Police call and say it's actually not a distress call. It's a deceased call. They, the detectives show up and he kind of describes it like when they're walking up, he's like, this is what I'm looking at. You can actually picture it like, here's the front door, here's this, here's this. And 
basically Chelsea is sitting in the wicker like love seat to the left of the front door and the first the first thing he makes note of in this report which stood out to me was that they claimed like all they were saying was that this girl showed up out of nowhere knocking on the door said she didn't feel well said she needed a glass asked for a glass of water that they, they brought her a glass of water she sat down and passed out the glass of water was found next to her. Yes. And what they noticed or what the detectives noticed was that there was, they could see bruising like on her cheek around her neck and blood coming out of the corner of her mouth. But she, they claimed she sat down and passed out and the blood was running like toward her forehead. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting like this and you and pass bleeding, out and you die, blood goes down. it's going to come down. Right. It might come through the crease of your mouth over just a little right. bit, but it's it's going to come down mm -hmm. on either side. Like it's not going to go it's oh. not going to drip in this direction. Right. So immediately they noticed that. And they asked about that like was she bleeding? What did she have injuries? When she asked for help, mm -hmm. and they're like, no, she, we don't know her. We don't know what's going on. She just knocked on our door, asked for a glass of water. We gave her the water. She sat down. She passed out and, in fact, passed away. Yeah. Well, after that, they kind of are like, okay, well, this is a crime scene for now because we have no idea what's going on. And they go inside the home. And as soon as they enter, there's basically four to six or seven kids um, from all ages playing video games in the living room. Right. Like, right when you walk in the door. They go in. They are like, okay, we're going to figure this out. They start asking questions. And they immediately start to, like, try to separate people so that they can keep the crime scene secluded and, straight and shut off. Right. Right. Like, just all, all the normal steps. Um, they have everyone leave the house via the back door so that no more contamination can get to the front porch right. and where the, the scene seems to be at this point. And on the way out, they have put all the people in the cars to transfer them to the station mm -hmm. to just ask questions and figure out what's going on so the crime scene people can do their work. Right. And as they're going to the cars, the mom of the suspect at this point, mm -hmm. he uses the word, she put her fingers like in my chest, like bruised it. Like, yeah, like hard, hard, like severe, like poked him. Yeah. And got he, his attention. Yes. And he said he looked at her and she mouthed the words, I need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And so then she turns and she's like, oh, hey, I forgot my purse or something inside the house. He realizes that's his cue for them to not be around anyone else. Yep. So that she can, in fact, speak to him. And they go back into the house. And she goes on to tell him, matter of fact, everything we just told you is a lie. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened. Right. That's where the can of worms opens. Oh, no. It is because... Good for her. Good for her. I was telling you before this, I was like, my mom ever ratted on me. But then you were like, but you're also not like someone who would be convicted of aggravated theft or assault sexual assault you're and not someone who's gonna somebody. be right. yeah exactly so if you're like mom i had to beat the shit off somebody because she was trying to stab me with a razor blade mm -hmm. your mom would be like where's she at yeah <laughs> exactly exactly so um the changing of the story happens and 
They get, you know, the crime scene under wraps. They're they're learning more about like what what exactly happened. And then they're also learning this new stuff from Carlos Juan Harrison's mother. Her name is Tijuana. And um, her version of accounts is a little blurry because um, on Saturday, you know, it happened like Saturday night, early Sunday morning. She had been drinking since 10 a.m. Like she was couldn't have been in the right mind right and couldn't give like she was part probably of not her, details like maybe no. maybe vague a b c d but like halfway but most definitely not not at the time of midnight. actual times actual memory right facts conversations things like that like right. that's not you wouldn't be able to no, do you that would, you wouldn't be able to do that no so she had been drinking for several hours and she was with her boyfriend, fiance. We've heard different reports. Yeah. Um, we've also heard that she was with like two or three friends, like one from the neighborhood, one was her cousin, one one was her cousin's friend. So she was with people all day drinking. And then at midnight, her son, Carlos, comes home with this young girl. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really think much of it. I would imagine that probably because of the that it wasn't a big deal and it wasn't something to pay attention to or notice. I would think that that might have happened on a normal, um, yeah. or regular basis. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, unfortunately, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's eighteen. He's an adult, mm-hmm. but. It's not uncommon for like an eighteen year old man to be dating a Yeah, but like woman. even my brother at eighteen, he wasn't gonna bring just anybody home to my parents' house and have them stay there. Like yeah. that was not Me and Ryan had a child together yeah, and he couldn't even stay, stay at my parents' house. Yeah. You know, in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. He had to sleep downstairs in the living room, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Which I know that's just how our family worked. I'm not saying everything works that way, but it does seem to be that it wasn't unusual for him to bring someone home and right. stay in the house. And I also think that for lack of information on all the, you know, five to seven kids that were, by kids I mean anywhere from like five years old to 18 years old that mm-hmm. were playing PlayStation, I have a feeling there were probably a lot of kids staying over there a lot of times. Right. You know, like mm-hmm. it wasn't unusual for people to just, Kids to just come and stay. Mm -hmm. And for them to have more friends come over and stay. Like, it wasn't... I don't think that was... Yeah, I think that was normal. Yeah, like a chaotic, like, family life or, like, just, like, home life where you don't really know Open door policy, probably. Right, right. Yeah, which can be good and bad, but for the most part, outside of this situation, seemed to be a a good thing. Like. All the kids in the neighborhood were just like, let's go over there. They have the, the PlayStation. Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> or or the game. Yeah, the yeah, gaming the, console. Yep. So that's what off, or Lieutenant Francis walked into, Daniel Francis. And so after he gets everyone kind of separated and put into police cars and headed to location of interviews... He talks to the mom and says, you know, what what really happened, and she changes her story almost immediately. She says that a woman walked up, she asked for water, she wasn't feeling well, she sat down on their front porch, and she never never had any contact with her again. Yeah. And so she changes her story, and she says that this woman, Chelsea Hayes, Came to their house the night before, around midnight-ish, with Mm -hmm. her son, Carlos. Mm -hmm. And before she went to bed, so she had been drinking from 10 a.m. until 3 (laughs) a.m. It's a lot of beer. But, I'm not here to judge. What if it wasn't even beer, though? Like, what if it was liquor? I know. I drink for How would she be standing up? I don't know. That makes me want to puke thinking about it. I know. I don't know. Ooh. But at about 3 a.m., she says, 
she goes to bed and she had noticed before she had went to bed that her son Carlos and this girl Chelsea had gone into his bedroom mm -hmm. and she didn't think anything of it she whatever she goes to bed after drinking for several hours at 3 a.m. and she doesn't wake up until like the next Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. and she doesn't really know what, what what happened no and I'll be honest I'm not shocked if she really doesn't know what no, happened she, because all the people that were there like all of her friends the fiance they were like nah I was too drunk to even realize realize anything was going on yeah so she basically wakes up goes about her business and then realizes that this girl is on her porch passed out. Um, I'm kind of unclear on the specifics of what happened. The two things that I know are for a fact are that her son, the, the, guy that the girl went home with mm -hmm. basically <laughs> was like stop asking questions this, this is, is the lie happened. we're gonna tell this mm -hmm. is the story this is what happened she came up knocked on our door mm -hmm. we don't know her she needed help she said she didn't feel good she asked for a glass of water she passed out mm. and for the that whole time being she went with that yeah the second part of that is that that's what they all stuck to until his aunt showed up. Mm -hmm. She was coming by to visit. I would imagine it's just a normal stop in, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. whatever. And she notices Chelsea sitting on the sitting front porch, porch in the on, on the Quaker furniture, passed out or unresponsive. And she's like goes inside and she's like what's going on here what's happening what's with the girl blah 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 blah. probably raising hell to be honest she's the whole reason that this yes off. she had been there for hours for hours and the only reason they called the cops was because the aunt showed up and called the I cops know. and was like we're not doing this I know. we need to call for help mm -hmm. Who knows what could have happened? I know. There were neighbors that saw her sitting on the porch and not moving for hours. Mm -hmm. And they didn't think to call. I know. This is a 14-year-old child. I know. I, mom or not, she is 14 years old. She's a baby. Yeah. Have you ever seen a 14-year-old sit still for more nope. than five minutes? Nope. Thank you. Yeah. Well... What were they thinking? Ugh. So the aunt is like, yeah, uh, what's going on? Yeah, we're not doing this. Finally, they call police or 911 or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and then, obviously, that's when we go back to it was a distress call, then it was a d deceased call, then police show up, detective show up. And now we are at the point of Basically getting everyone that was in the house to the station mm -hmm. for questioning. Not there. No one's charged with anything. Right. Um, it's more or less they're just trying to make sure that for the younger ones they have um, legal guardians and things that are being appointed and like called to make sure that they can either go home or be questioned with their guardian for anyone that was of age making sure that they are separated from each other so that they cannot you know yeah come up further further their story right. along um and try to just get down to the facts of it all mm -hmm. especially because before they even got there before they even left the house the suspect's mom the homeowner or the main um tenant mm -hmm. was the one who said this is all a lie, and right. that is not what happened. Yeah. So now they know they've got to question the older of age people because that's more than likely who is going to know 
what happened. Right. Um, and be allowed to speak on their own without a parent. Right. Um, basically, everyone kind of, for the most part in the beginning, tells the same story. Right. There, besides the suspect's mom coming forward about that not being true in the beginning, her boyfriend was questioned and he made it clear the suspect asked me to lie told me to say this story and I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie for him that's not at all what happened this is what happened then you've got um the younger kids they were in fact with um with an adult or a guardian able to question the two youngest together and then the two that were like closer to like 10 years old give or take together Mm -hmm. and they all kind of presented a similar, mm, yeah, the girl was here and then something happened and mm-hmm. then she was on the porch. Like, right. it wasn't like this girl walked up and knocked on the door. They right. they kind of, they were they, like, no, she stayed the night. And exactly. Di- they didn't know specifics, but they knew she didn't come up and knock on the door. Right. They knew she had spent the night at the house. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden she was on the porch and it wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the suspect, who we'll get into like his five versions of the story. Mm -hmm. But the stepdad, his story was pretty detailed. Yeah, he went to work at early hours, and he didn't see a a ton. I mean, he didn't drink as much He knew that she came home with him. Right. And stayed the night. Right. I think everyone there was like... I saw Carlos, he brought home this girl, we saw them go into his bedroom. Like, yeah. That was pretty much the extent of it. They were also drunk, so like, yep. you know, they couldn't really give a solid comment on it, but... But even in the liquefied version of the solid story, everyone kind of made the same points. Right. Of right. the real story. Exactly. Of the, she came home with him, she mm-hmm. stayed the night. hmm after we were up drinking for a few more hours, then the stepdad or the the mom's boyfriend woke up. He said he left for work about nine a.m. or was that like nine a.m. early morning? Everyone else was still asleep. Yep. Goes to work, comes home at five p.m. and sees she, her, and she's on the porch, but doesn't do anything and doesn't do a thing. Goes inside. I'm not even sure if he questioned it or even brought it up when he walked in the house. Mm -hmm. Because this was also a couple hours before the aunt came by. Everyone was so drunk. Like, I would... If I lived in a house where everyone was drunk all the time, I I wouldn't question someone. Being passed out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. You'd probably just be like, oh, they're drunk too. They're they're drunk too. They probably do see that a lot. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, let's get into the evidence and the injuries because we know that Carlos gives this uh, initial statement and the mom is like, no, I need to talk to you. There's something different. And so, Lieutenant Daniel Francis is going harder in on him. So, let's go into the evidence because the evidence is going to come out as he is interviewing Carlos. Yeah. So she had, um, like you said, one drop of blood that was coming from her mouth, but like the corner of her forehead. So like her head was back. It was coming while, this way, but it was going up. this way. But the way she was seated, it should not drip right that way. Right. It should drip. So she died sometime while her head was back, and yeah. she wasn't found that way. So that was suspicious. She had bruising on her cheek right. and around her neck. Bru- bruising on her neck. She had um, damage to her chest and her kidneys, and also vocal her, cords. Her vocal cords. Um, and I mean, her vagina. vagina. Her vocal cords. Genital area right. in and around all the way. Right. Her vocal cords... Um, A medical examiner said she could not get these injuries unless she was screaming bloody murder. Because it wasn't even just her her vocal cords. She had marks 
on the back of her throat. Yes. That only, they can only happen if you are laboring to scream right. for such a long amount of time. And, f at, and I mean, we're talking screaming for a long amount of time. So it's, once your vocal cords get damaged, then that vibration, because they're damaged, mm -hmm. then creates wounds on the back of your throat because your vocal cords are damaged and they're not in their right place. Right. So all that vibration is creating a wound in the back of your throat instead of your vocal cords being in place. Right. So that happened after her vocal cords are damaged. And I can't believe anyone, I mean, I guess because they were probably all wasted, Nobody heard anything. Like, I can only imagine there was probably music or something maybe. too, and it's or probably video games. a loud area like Twelfth Avenue. Like, yeah, that's probably a louder area. But the fact that no one—I mean, they were all wasted. So, like, maybe they were so drunk that they didn't hear it. Or I hate heard to it say and this, but it. looking at his record, mm. it might have been something that they were used to hearing. Maybe. Because he had been tried and charged for lots of violent, sexual, mm -hmm. criminal, assault yeah, he was things on, before. He was on the sex offender list in Whitwell, Tennessee. Um, he was actually out on bond at the time this happened mm -hmm. for aggravated burglary and theft. So, maybe... He had, he had a solid rap had, sheet. Yeah. Of violent crimes mm -hmm. including sexual, sexual assault and just yeah not could you could you imagine screaming no for so long mm -mm. and so hard mm -mm. that you rupture your vocal cords i talk every day for a living and i don't think i could ever get to that point like she had to be it makes me sick i know and, you know, it's crazy, too. I truly believe in, like, survival mode for anybody, any age. I don't care if you're a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. We Everybody's got it. Mm -hmm. Everybody. We're built that way. Yeah. We're made that way. She might have been a 14-year-old girl, and she was, but she was a mother. Once you're a mom, you've got a whole different level of badass. Yeah. You know, like, I don't care. You're built different. Yeah. Like, you, you raise up a level. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine. I know. I cannot imagine. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> so. Dang. I know. It's just, it should never happen. No. But Carlos's gosh. story is, at the beginning, that... You know, she came up, she asked for water, she didn't feel good. But then he switches the story for the first time in many. And he's saying that she came home with him that night. They had met out. She came home with him. It was like midnight. Um, they had consensual sex. And he let her sleep in his bedroom. He went out to the couch. And when he woke up, <clears throat> she was unconscious on the floor yeah um i do want to point out too that before they even made it i don't know how we forgot to bring this up before they made it to the station when the mom of the suspect says i need to talk to you she tells him the detective that well first the detective says she receives a call and she answers it while they're back in the house away from everyone else mm -hmm. and all he hears her say he can't obviously hear what they're saying but he hears her say i ain't lying to this man anymore yeah then she says that the story was made up and that chelsea came home with carlos around 12 and 12 to 2 a.m whatever right she went to bed at three <coughs> she never then, when she woke up in the afternoon she was already dead right so she didn't call either. Right. And she woke up around noon. Right. The her boyfriend didn't get home till five. PM? Yeah. So that's like five hours that this kid is sitting on the front porch dead. And people adults know. I know. 
neighbors saw her. Yeah, neighbors and didn't reported call. saying like I saw a young kid on the, the front porch. Like, oh my gosh. Um, if you ever have a question about should I call police? Call. That should be your answer. That's your answer right there. Mm-hmm. If you're thinking about it, you call. should call. Yep. If you should call nine one one, call. Call. If you should call the fire department, call. I mean, if it's a if it pops into yep. your mind, that's your sign. Call for help. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Might not turn into anything. That's great. That's fine. That's wonderful. But you could be the call that yeah. saves someone's life. Yep. Call, call, call. Yeah. If you're thinking about it, call. We should say that every episode. We should say that every episode. Golly. And hopefully people do their job uh-huh. based on our last case. A lot of people do not you know how many times I call 911? I've called a few times actually but too and I call a lot. I, I mean not feel a lot. Awkward. But like don't feel awkward. You're helping someone. No, but the few times I've had to call, it's in like a crazy situation yeah. where I'm like driving down the road. Like the first time I ever actually had to call nine one one, I was like twenty years old, driving almost to Charlotte. It's nighttime. Bentley's in the backseat. And I'm on a highway going this way, two lane highway, like Highway 58, mm-hmm. basically. There's an 18-wheeler that is coming the opposite direction and cuts over, and the thing tips over, and I can just see, like, the grass and the mud, like, coming up, and I'm like, oh, no. Is this real life? Like, that truck, that truck just, oh, my gosh. So, I call, but I don't know where, like, I know where I am, mm-hmm. but I don't know the exit names. I don't, I know a mile marker and stuff, but mm-hmm. I'm like, holy crap. So I pull over off the next exit, I'm calling, I'm like, hey, I'm from out of town, but I was driving and this happened, and that lady was such an asshole to me. She was such an asshole. She's like, well, where are you? Like, what's the time? I'm like, I don't know. I can tell you what direction I'm at, what highway I'm on, and and what mile marker. Like, that should be enough, right? Like, I can tell you a town and there's going to be a thousand places. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you what direction I was going, yeah. what exit I got off of, and what the mile marker was that that happened at, mm-hmm. what, I'm confused. What else do you need? Anytime I call it was emergency, awful. emergency services, I'm like, hi, I'm Natalie. I work for WDOD Radio. I'm a traffic <laughs> I explain you everything. You name drop. <laughs> I name drop, so they'll freaking take me seriously. No, maybe I'll just pull that. Like, I'm hi, I'm Macy, and I work for the radio station. <laughs> You should, I, I people am, will take you more seriously. I am a true crime podcaster. Yeah. And <laughs> Hi, I'm Macy from the And you podcast. better believe I'm recording this shit on my own. Because <laughs> who knows what it could turn into, right? Exactly. But no, then I've called from like, I've, I've seen a house. On fire? Everything that's happened has been on the interstate. Like, I'm driving down the interstate, I see a house on fire, like, right on the edge. I'm like, holy crap. And then, you know, you have that thought, like, so oh, I bet they're calls. getting flooded with calls. Yeah. But again, it's like if you're thinking you need to call, you gotta call. You gotta call. So I'm like, okay, I just passed this exit and I'm heading this direction and to my left there's a house right off the interstate mm-hmm. and it is blazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I just wanna make sure y'all were aware. I don't know if they're headed that way, whatever. Yeah. But they'll usually tell you. Yeah. Like yeah. if I say We've we've this. gotten that report or right. we've got people on yep. the way, whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Call, call, call. Yeah. Even if they are turds. Even if you question it, yeah. Just give the Im- the information you know, and that's it. Give your number if they need to ask any more questions, and that's you know it. one thing that, um, as I get older and as social media gets more relevant, I feel like I haven't been like in this situation per se. But I feel like it would definitely be one where even I would question, do I call or do I not? Is Say you're at like the, the grocery store or like Walmart or something and you see something that's off. Like whether it be a man and a woman and how it's going or like a child and just stuff like that. Like you know how sometimes you just get that feeling like, this isn't this isn't right. Something's wrong. I'm like, I people should call in that is, instance. Mm-hmm. It could turn out to be nothing, but like that could save someone's life. Right. And I'm big on energy. 
When yeah. the energy ain't right, something's wrong. Right. Like, and you you can't step in. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean authorities authorities can't. can't. Right. And I don't I don't mean that to be like an abusive privilege for it could be for anything. the community or citizens. Yeah. But I most definitely wouldn't want to walk away from a situation knowing I felt something off and I didn't call only for the next day or two days later to realize that I was, my intuition was in fact right mm-hmm. and I didn't do anything about mm-hmm. it. That would eat me up with guilt. So. For sure. So bad. For sure. Yeah. Okay, back off our soapbox. Okay, yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you think you want to call 911? Call. Call 911. Call somebody, Some, even the manager, the yeah. supervisor, anybody at a place. Like, just call. Yeah. So the guilt is like off of you at that point because you don't want to be. You've done guilt. your your duty. civilian duty. Yep. Mm-hmm. You did what you could do. Mm-hmm. And that's all you can do because mm-hmm. you don't need to put yourself in harm. Yeah. When there's no reason to right. yet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, trust your gut. Yes, trust your gut. Okay. So, After this, when the Oh, when the aunt shows up. So the aunt shows up. This is Tawana, the Carlos's mom's sister, sister. shows up and is like, "WTF? What? Why yeah, is there a young girl on your porch?" We and call what, what's up with her? Do we know her? Why is she there? Did y'all know she was there? And they started the lie then. Like, yeah, oh, she came up and she she asked for water. water. She said she didn't she feel well. And she's like, "We need to call for help." Right. I don't think they wanted her to, but I, I think, think so she either. did it anyways. Yeah. And thank God for her. Mm-hmm. Um, so her, uh, Chelsea's cause of death was um, head injury. She had a, a brain bleed, like we said before. She had bruising on her face and her neck, uh, damage to her chest and her liver and her vagina, and trauma. Just trauma. Trauma all around. Damage. Trauma. Right. Like, severe. Vocal cords were completely gone, yeah, Um, which then led to the injuries to the back of her throat. There was multiple signs of sexual assault, Mm -hmm. including semen that was found inside of her, Um, brain injury, Mm -hmm. which ultimately ended up being the cause of death. Right. Um, It created a brain bleed. Um... Too much. There's a lot. It was not. It was not what. It was not okay. It wasn't matching up from the scene to what, what they were saying exactly. happened. And then he did make a comment because they asked him about what, like, she's got bruising on her cheeks, around her neck. Like, why? She didn't say anything, like, about that mm-hmm. when he was, they were still claiming, like, she just walked up and asked for help because she didn't feel well. And he's like, I I hadn't seen any of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Carlos's story changes several times. His first story is she walked up and I don't know what happened. His second story is, oh, she she came home with me. We had consensual sex. And she left. And she left. And then came back the next day asking for help. Exactly. Then his third story was, all of that happened, but when after we had sex, I left her in my bedroom. I slept on the couch, and then when I woke up, she was unconscious on the floor. This sec- Actually, there's a story in between that. He says they, she came home with him. They had considerable sex. She stayed the night. He wakes up in the morning, goes to the kitchen to make breakfast, plays video games. He goes back to the bedroom, and she's passed out on the floor. Mm -hmm. So how'd she end up on the porch? Confused. Yeah. So that that's when when they're like, but how'd she end up on the porch? That's when he's like, oh yeah, never mind. This is what happened. Mm-hmm. And then I think he finally tells the truth and is like, I don't think he got scared. I think he got freaked out. Um, he was in fact a on the 
the the sexual uh, sex sex offender, sex offender list. list. He was also out on bond at the time for um, aggravated burglary and theft. So he was probably kind of weary around police officers, but he kind of says the same story again with some changes. And she, she, he woke up. She was on the floor, so he kind of just put her outside to sober up or uh, he doesn't really give his reasoning on why no. he well, stayed. Because it's not true. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of hard to come up with the reasoning when it's all bullshit. Yeah. Uh, ugh. Yeah. So, Anyways. I've heard reports actually, okay, he had like two or three younger brothers and I've heard reports where he made his younger brothers help him Move her. Stage this. Yeah, and they actually admitted mm -hmm. that to the detectives. There were, I think there was one or two that were like, she stayed the night, mm -hmm. and then she didn't feel good, and she was on her porch. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the older two, one of them admitted, I think both of them helped, but one of them admitted to helping him move her. Yeah. And... But I'm just like, you know what? I hope that that child, because let's keep in mind this kid was like 11, understands what he did do by telling the truth. Yeah, that's true. Like, I hope he thinks that even if he did a bad thing, we can't forget if he was talked into it or coerced or scared mm -hmm. and felt like he had to. But, like, at the end of the day, I hope he remembers that he told the truth. The truth will set you free. Yes. And he was 11 years old. Yeah. Like, Lieutenant Daniel, he has been very involved in the younger kids' lives. Like, he, yes. he made, a like, a bet with them after Carlos went away and, you know, all this was a yeah. closed case. He was like, if you don't get in any trouble... I'm going to take you to an NBA, NBA game. basketball game. Yes, I, I remember that. And I love that he ended up taking the younger of the brothers because the older of the brothers had actually gotten in trouble and he was not like going to... Like the week before, mm -hmm. the week, like that week when they were supposed to go to no. the game. And he was like, it's not that I don't love you. Yeah. Because I do love you. It's that we had a deal. Yep. And you broke the deal. Mm -hmm. And so he took that his ticket and gave it to the younger one. Yeah, his and friend. And took or them to the NBA game. Mm -hmm. There are consequences to your actions. Yes. Yes, and there he are. Taught, he taught them that. Yes. He's such a great guy. No, he is five star. Daniel Francis. We need to do uh, We've talked to you before but we love you. Yeah. No. It's so Freaking good. great man. Such a great guy. If every cop and every oh, no. detective in the world was like him. We wouldn't have to People wouldn't feel like they were nothing. Yes. Trash after and it. dismissed and unseen and uncared about and unloved and not yeah. worthy. Like, yeah. holy crap! Mm -hmm. That's why we gotta get one here. Yeah, we need to. We need to talk to him. He's great. Again, um, he did say that uh, with this case, he kind of got in trouble with his bosses and you know whatever. <laughs> hey, um, keep getting in trouble. Yes, it's fine. Seriously. We get in trouble all the time. Every. <laughs> single day I every day <laughs> every day this is a it good is, kind of trouble though it's worth getting in trouble when it's for the betterment of humanity yes yeah. humankind mm -hmm. like let's just be better cross the boundaries that people are too afraid to cross yep because they're not brave enough to do it yep. we got the balls yep and lieutenant daniel has the balls yes he does so let's get into trial and conviction it was Pretty, this is was pretty probably our drive. best open shut case. case mm -hmm. For sure, so far. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Horror, usually it's like, oh, what happened? What happened? Yep. What happened? Oh, Lord, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Now it's like, this oh. happened? Boom. Boom. Yep, exactly. So Carlos was sentenced to 25 years. In the state of Tennessee, he is still incarcerated as of today. Yep. Um, he does 
have a chance of getting out within the next five, ten years. Um, but he was charged and convicted for the death of a 14-year-old girl. Yeah. And that's after the rap sheet he already had. Yeah. Um, but justice was served in this case. And I still do want to point out, although we might not agree with you know, maybe how they were running things at their house or what they were doing. Like, props to the adults that told the truth. Mm-hmm. Because how many cases have we covered where we are like, you are the adult. Yeah. You are the grown-ass person. Yeah. And you can't, you can't put yourself on the line for whatever may come. To tell the truth for this child? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Face palm, for sure. Might not have to agree with everything, but when it came down to it, the adults did, it might have taken a few hours, but they did do the right thing. They did do the right thing. And if they didn't, we would be having a different kind of episode right now. It Mm -hmm. might be three part. I know. Like last time. And we know how well we survived those. (laughs) But you made a good point about the parents because I was like, if I ever killed, you know, I said this at the beginning of the episode, if I ever killed someone, my mom would like go to the grave, but I'm also not charged with all these different things. But you also made a point to say like, it would be, why would he lie for them? Was, were they scared of him because of all the other things that he had done? Yeah. I, I, I always try to put myself in the shoes of who I'm talking about, especially if I'm kind of judging them, yeah. you know? Because I, I feel like that's only, like, the fair thing to do because it I'm is. not perfect and right. I make a lot of mistakes, especially parenting. Especially parenting. So I try not to just be so harsh. Yeah. And if I'm going to be harsh, I really have to... Put yourself in Yeah, shoes. like, okay, think about it, think about it, think about it. First of all, People can judge me all they want for what I'm about to say, but I will never be afraid of my kids. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. I am in charge. When you're 18, if you want to go off and do something else somewhere else, that's fine, but I will never be afraid of you. Yeah. They will always know not to fuck with me. We grew up And I'm not even a gnarly parent. Like, I don't beat them. I don't, nothing. Like, they just know. It's the look. The All give. it takes. I'm a really good whisperer, and I have great facial expressions. Yeah. That's all it takes. And you have to be a parent that shows up and respects them as a child, as a human being, respects what they want, what they say, but it don't mean you got to do it. Yeah. But you have to respect what they have to say mm-hmm. and how they feel. And you have to just show up for them because that makes them respect you. Right. It's all about respect. Yeah. But I can tell you, Bentley could walk in this door right now while we're recording. And you could be like, are you afraid of your mama? And he'd be like, that 14-year-old puberty, man, my mama sucks. But he's going to give you that, like, smirk, like, I wouldn't mess mess with her. (laughs) (laughs) But he also knows I'm going to be the first one to have his back, but not about some bullshit. I'm not going to cover for him. Yeah. Like, I will visit you in prison or rehab or wherever we got to go. You said that. You were like, I can still we're be gonna, a mom We are going to face our consequences. Mm-hmm. I can still love you. I can still be your mother and love you in any environment. Right. It does not mean that I have to support you in some hateful, violent crap. Right. But I, for damn sure, will never be afraid of you. Yeah. And if I am afraid of you, then we need to get help and get you somewhere. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm afraid of you, then everybody should be afraid of yeah. you. Period. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier said than done. A lot easier said than done. But people need to hear it. Cause yeah, you got to kind of live by that. You have to, your child, like... Then everyone should be ev- afraid. Yeah. Because you are their parent. Yeah, they're not going to kill you, but they might kill someone else or yes. hurt someone else. If you, like, it, point blank, period. And you can always be a parent and love your child while they are somewhere that can help them. Right. And keep everyone else safe. Yeah. It sucks. It's not ideal Mm -hmm. by any freaking means. But, like, we got to stop saving our kids from 
the destruction and the bullshit they create. Yeah. Consequences mean something. Yeah. They mean something. You touch a hot stove, you get burned. Mm -hmm. You make a dump. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah, you said that. Period. Yeah. It's not hard. (laughs) It sucks, but it's not. Yeah, it's not hard. It's not hard to tell the truth. It's hard to lie about something and keep it straight. Yeah. And yeah. you have to ultimately make the decision of, do I want it to be difficult and the hardest thing I've ever done mm-hmm. for two or three years while we deal with this and get better and grow and learn from it and get healthy versus this being this hard and this difficult for the rest of my life and for yeah. the rest of my child's life. Yeah. I think long term sounds terrible. His mom was probably the one who set him on the right direction to confess what happened even though it took you know several interviews and tries with detectives I think with his mom telling the truth it was his okay to tell the truth too I agree I agree with that a hundred percent it's like okay instead of thinking like oh my mama told on me it's like she told the truth, so I She's too. telling the truth, which means she expects me to tell the truth, which means she's going to love me through what I've done mm-hmm. and the consequences I have to pay for what I've done, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a big deal when the people that care about you the most make you and kind of force you into responsibility right. and accountability. Yeah. It doesn't always work out that way, mm-hmm. but... For the most part, if we can support one another, big, tall, old, young, all the things, like short, small, we kind of go with the safe, all right, I'll own it because I know that's the right thing to do and there, my people will still be there. You're right. I'll just pay for it and learn from it mm-hmm. and we can move on and be better. Yeah. That's the hope, anyway. Yeah. I hope, um, you know, I hope that happens. I hope reform happens, you know. Um, prison's kind of there for that, to reform people. and doesn't mean it's that way. It doesn't mean it's that way. Especially but, for a person of color. Right. You're exactly right. So, with the end of this story... Because we didn't find very much online about this, and so that's kind of like it what was very us. difficult to find kind of like the meat. Any, you know why? Kind of meat. What yeah. actually happened? Exactly. How did this end up this way? It wasn't brought up at trial. Like it was just he didn't he didn't get on the stand, so he didn't we didn't get to hear his side of the story. I don't think we they were actually in a relationship, so it was no. not. There was no backstory. There right. was no motive. What's the motive? Right. Means motive opportunity. Yeah. He had opportunity, but I don't think he had really the means or, or the, the motive. motive. I agree. I, I agree with that. Because you brought up at the beginning, like, did he really do this? Right. Did he? With his background, I would think he it's, could have, yeah. and it was an accident, and 25 years in prison would suffice for the accident, but... I don't think he planned on doing it. I think... I... I... uh, There's just not enough that I've heard. There could be a lot that we just don't know. But based off of what we could find and what we do know, if that's exactly how it is and what we know is all we could ever know, I do feel like... Maybe it was an accident? Not necessarily an accident. I think it could be... Things got on Murder too. Right. Oh, and, but I would also want to add on to that, like, sexual assault, rape, possibly some sort of uh, sexual assault for a minor. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, then you've got all kinds of other charges. Yeah. Like, we could go for... Um, child endangerment, all these Yes, different. and the, oh my God, what's the word? When you get in the way of an investigation, when you um, try to hide evidence, um, when you try to cover something up, all those things. Yeah. My brain's just really mushy because it's late. <laughs> it is 820. 
gotta go to bed. We do. Good night. It's so late right now. Praise um, for Lieutenant Daniel Francis. We've talked to yes. him. We really, like, he was willing to help us out with this and give us any kind of um, questions for the answers. I know he's done other podcasts before and gotten trouble with it, but... I also just love willing. the way he speaks about victims and... Perpetrators. Yeah. He is so respectful. He is so respectful. He, he is like never a, says give the facts. Yep. Give the good about the humans. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Bye. The facts and the good things. He's not going to try and... Let the evidence speak for itself. Yeah. He doesn't gonna... stain reputations. It's great. I yeah. love it. He's such a good one. And I'm he so is. glad he is still on the chat of the yes. Force, you know? Yeah. It gives me hope. I know. We should try to have him on one day just... We need to. Just to, like, shoot the shit. Just to, like dig into his brain like yeah just so everyone else can be blessed with his presence <laughs> i know he's such a good person so he is he's great i just feel like he's a great guy so i'm really glad that he was assigned to the chelsea hayes case yeah and you know um this is an opportunity to say you know domestic violence is real february was teen domestic dating month violence month yep um so you know if you if you know anything we'll we'll put up some info about domestic violence teen domestic violence yep um reach out mm -hmm. do it again just like the 911 thing if you feel like you should call 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 if you know something is not right with what the situation you're in, mm -hmm. reach out. Reach out. Feel free to reach out to expired podcast. Yeah. Like we are on the messages. Yeah, and it can be anonymous and we can get it to the right people. Yes. And you have nothing to do, not do with it. We do not have to share it, anything you about to, you. You don't have to have that guilt of not saying anything. So yep. if you think you should call, call. Yep. We and, gotcha. Yeah. Here we go again. We're not gonna sleep tonight. I know. We say that every episode. Because it's not true. Gonna sleep tonight. It's so bad. I'm not gonna sleep tonight. <laughs> every time. The, then me after I drop my kids off at school. I need then, to take a nap. Yep. <laughs> you know why you want, need to take a nap every day? It's because I can't stop thinking about all these know. terrible things. I know. All right, let's go eat dinner. Yes. It'll be okay. Talk about for the way. Taco Bell for the win. I'm for sure going to sleep in. Memorial of Chelsea Hayes. Yes. And her son is still in this area. So, you know. Good vibes to him. Good vibes to him. Positive comments. We worked on our mic this week. So, hopefully it's hopefully better it's for better. our listeners. Yes. Hopefully it's better. If we, it's not, we let us know. Hard on that. <laughs> we really well, we, we have like looked 14, up stuff. We have like fourteen thousand mics. <laughs> we do. We have like fourteen different mics. We tested mics. a lot of them. <laughs> we tested them. This, this was the winner. Worked the best. Yeah, and the it, middle thing is blinking, so it seems like sounds like a winner. Yeah, Should and if it doesn't, it? let us know. We'll try and fix it. We listen to your comments. We love your. Um, what do we call it? Uh, creative criticism. Constructive criticism. criticism. Mm -hmm. Sometimes creative. Usually that's when someone's being an asshole. Yeah. It's still fun. Yeah. Um, and if you're new, make sure you go listen to our previous case. It's a three-part series mm -hmm. on the Solomons. Um, it's an it, open case. And it is interesting. It's wild. That case might be the death of me, but I'll be okay with that. I know. It's worth it. Go I listen call to her and see if we have any updates. Yeah. Maybe we'll give an update in the next Definitely. episode. All right. Love you guys. Good night. It's the Expired Podcast.